Hey everybody, Marcus from Heel Toe Automotive and welcome to another episode of Heel Toe Corner Club. In this episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about carb exemption order numbers. Being in the industry for such a long time, it's been a little bit, um, a little bit more than 20 years now. We've had seen a lot of changes in the industry. We've seen a lot of parts come and go. And one of the things that's been sort of a hot button issue the entire time was this idea about legality of parts that are being used on your car. And so one of the things that's always been sort of a big issue is this California Air Resources Board exemption orders. Uh, very early on, we had problems with parts uh, being road legal, but it was mostly exhaust systems and had to do with noise. It took a little time uh, for the government to figure out that some of these parts were actually affecting emissions as well. Things like headers and cat uh, catalytic converters, intakes, things like that. And so the Air Resources Board um, can come up with a way of determining some items being affecting emissions or not affecting emissions and they develop this process of making something uh, basically exempt from uh, scrutiny when you're going to do a smog test and so what they would issue is an exemption or an executive order number I, I always called it an exemption order number but that's not what it is it's actually an executive order number and one of the most important things to remember about this is that these numbers are not an endorsement saying that the part is street legal so if you get an intake system or a header or whatever and it's got a carb eo number on it basically that exemption sorry executive see i keep doing it the executive order number basically says you can ignore this item it's been tested uh, not to affect emissions in a negative way and therefore through the course of a regular smog or emissions test you can ignore the fact that this aftermarket part is on the car um, if a part doesn't have an executive order number that means that it's supposed to be failing a visual inspection uh, as far as i know the test facility shouldn't even be testing the tailpipe emissions at that point um, so Basically, the, the nuts and bolts of this is, is that the exemption order number applies to a certain part number on an item, like an aftermarket part number for an intake system, and then that correlates with a list of vehicles for which that part number is applicable to um, on the vehicle side. So something interesting, uh, we have uh, an intake system that's really popular for the third generation TLs. 04 to 08 TL, it's a 24-6110C. It's the AM V2 intake, and many of our TL customers have this part. The interesting thing about this part is it actually is made for an Accord. It's never been branded as a TL part. For some reason, AM Induction made this part for 03 to 07 Accord V6s. Well, come to find out that the intake fits perfectly on a TL, right? So the exempt executive order number, the CARB EO number on that intake is actually applicable to an Accord, not a TL. But we don't have people having trouble failing emissions with these, right? So when the smog guy goes and tests the car and punches in the EO number into the uh, emissions computer, it doesn't fail a TL. Well, why is that? Well, that's because AM actually does make a cold air intake for third generation TLs as well, but it has its own um, executive order number on it. And believe it or not, it's the same number as the one for the AEM V2 for an Accord, right? So navigating this water, right, you can use an Accord AEM V2 intake on a TL because coincidentally the TL also has a cold air intake from AM that has the same EO number on it. So they don't get too deep into which specific intake is it by part number all the time because when you're at the smog station it doesn't necessarily have you punch in the part number of the part that you have. And maybe that's something that's supposed to be checked but isn't necessarily. But the important point is that if you have like a Civic 
intake system, right? That's got its own carb EO number and you're able to retrofit that onto, um, I'll pull something random out of the air like an Acura RDX, uh, which no intake system would exist for that car from the same manufacturer. Let's just say AEM makes an intake for a Civic, but they don't make one for an RDX, but you can make a Civic intake fit on an RDX. Well, when you go to get your RDX tested and they punch in the EO number on the Civic intake, it will not come up as a good number for the RDX and therefore you probably won't pass your emissions inspection. So, so the EO number is tied to the part number of the part and the application for which it goes to. Uh, and getting these EO numbers is sort of like a costly, you know, and by time and by money expense for manufacturers. So you're going to find some intake systems have like an EO number. Larger manufacturers will have a whole range of intakes that have EO numbers, but smaller companies don't. And as those companies mature, they'll usually try to achieve carb exemption after a while because they want to make sure that the part is legal for sale in all 50 states, especially California, where people buy tons and tons of these things. And now we have other states that are following suit with uh, California emissions like Maine and New York, I believe, actually have adopted CARB standards. Uh, Colorado has their own standard that they have. And so, like, as states sort of come on with emissions testing standards that California has devised, they become a little bit more federalized. And so getting these EO numbers is kind of an important thing for manufacturers, but also trying to cover the bases and make sure that, you know, we're going to sell enough of these intakes to warrant the expense uh, and the investment in time and resources to actually get the testing done. So, all in the name of making a car uh, emissions compliant even after you've modified it. Uh, if you ask me, it's becoming sort of an antiquated system because, you know, all the government's pushing us towards electric cars anyway. And so I'd really like to see them go after those industries where, you know, to make sure that uh, our electricity production is clean because as more and more vehicles come off the road, emissions is becoming less and less all the time. Vehicles get better fuel economy all the time. Like how much do we really need to keep worrying about, you know, an intake system that frankly doesn't really do anything uh, to the car or a tuning system that, yeah, maybe a small percentage of people, the car is going to emit a little bit more emissions, but uh, you know, these cars barely even get driven most of the time. So I would personally love to see a change in the way that we view what's a legal part and what's not a legal part, especially after time, you know, some of these cars are becoming not legal on the road anyway. Um, but hey, this is the system that we live in and I think it helps to understand what these exemption order numbers mean and why they apply to some parts and some cars and not other parts and not other cars. Um, Last point on this, there's been uh, a, a need to portray this data on the website so that people have awareness when they're shopping for these parts. Um, and so with the latest update that we're doing on the heel -toe website now, we're actually going to be notifying customers what are the exemption order numbers for certain parts so that you would know that this part is basically has been tested by the Air Resources Board and is legal for use on a car. Which car is going to depend on your own research? Uh, it'll be obviously suggested that the EO number is applicable to the car, the intake that you're looking at, for example. So if you pull up a TSX intake, you're going to want to assume that that EO number is legal on a TSX. But there are some finer points that you need to be aware of. For example, an 04 to 07 sorry, an 04 to 08 TSX, uh, the same intake system works on all those cars, but some manufacturers may have only tested for 04 and 05 TSXs. So if you have an 08 TSX with one of those intakes on and go to get it tested, it may fail because the 08 doesn't fall underneath the range of what has been tested by CARB. Now we know the intake fits on the car, so we'll list it for everything. And if you live in a non-CARB state, you know, like Texas or, you know, Montana or whatever, uh, they're not really going to care what year the car is. They're not even going to run the exemption order number 
at all. So we'll go ahead and list an intake as being for 04 to 08, but we'll put a little link next to the EO number so you can go to the Air Resources Board where that um, emissions document outlines which cars it's for. So it's gonna be on you to double check and make sure that your car falls within the exemption order number range. Uh, so that latest update is gonna have the number, a link to the Air Resources Board website where you can double check and a little note that says you should double check for sure. Um, if a part should have an EO number but doesn't, we'll let you know that it's only gonna be legal in certain states and not others. Um, off-road use only and then some parts uh, just would be flat out you know not legal for use anywhere and we'll um, make some notation on that as well so that's a lot about EO numbers and whatnot hopefully it helps you understand how those work a little bit better if you have any questions feel free to leave us a message or reach out by text or phone again this is Marcus from Heel Toe and thank you very much for listening